it is a privilege to be on any movie that you make. And I... Thief would say that. I, <laughs> I do have sticky fingers and I have some memorabilia from this film. I was missing some underpants. <laughs> <laughs> the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. How are we doing this morning? Doing good. Well, thank you. Uh, thank good. you so much for having me and talking to me about it. Henry C., I'm going to come to you first. <laughs> I feel like every time you do a movie junket, we hear about James Bond, we hear about things like that, and everybody's always asking you about it. In Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, you're playing the guy who inspired the fictional character. Mm -hmm. uh, how, did, how were you introduced to Gus Marsh Phillips? Uh, via the script. Actually, okay. um, that was my first access point. And then I read the book, which the script is based upon, and it, that's where I got all my info. And then really, we, we kind of just, we, we created this sort of hyperbolic version of the character to, to fit into this movie. But it, it's, there's, there's not a huge amount written about these guys because they were obviously fairly secret type squirrel types. So yeah, yeah. that's awesome. little known fact actually that I believe, and I may be completely wrong about this, but Major Gus March Phillips, the character I play, was also an amateur poet and author. And he had written a book, I believe, with a character who was based upon the kind of adventures he had had. And had he not died during World War II, there's a chance he may have beaten Ian Fleming to the punch when it came to writing a Bond type character. We need to find that book. Yeah, I mean, if it's true, it could, be, it, could be, it could be, it could be. He wrote a glorified story about himself. Not about himself, no, no, but he, but he, 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 he like had a, a fictional character who he, he created based upon his experience, sure. you or, or the experiences. You have to find I mean, it. it could Imagine be, finding that manuscript. It could be rubbish. Right. It could, I could be making it. But <laughs> but maybe. But now it's you a good guys, story, right? I think like, you guys all got to start doing that about your lives and start writing a fictional, you know, amplified version, because you guys get to do pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. Instagram. <laughs> that's yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Dude, I see you on Instagram gaming yeah. and stuff. You playing Helldivers yet? I have not, no. No, I have not. I recommend it. No, I haven't uh, got much time for gaming of late. Oh, a little bit busy. Yeah. yeah. But hey, man. Uh, one thing Guy Ritchie does really well is like male relationships, guys being awesome versions of themselves. And you guys seem like you had a blast. It looks like you're having fun on the press tour so far. When you all met for the first time, was there like a ministry of ungentlemanly warfare initiation process? How'd you guys all come to be such good friends when you first started? Ooh. Oh. I, our first day on set, actually, we were all in the same room at the same time. So it was, yeah. in that sense, it's really great. Because sometimes you, you get onto sort of a, 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 a project and you, you do a scene with him, you do a scene with him. But from the get-go, like the energy, the creativity, just the flow was there. And I think that really is down to Guy's way of filming um, and directing. And we're all kind of in the same kind of pot. Uh, half of us don't know kind of really exactly what we're doing. Um, because his style is very much seeing the environment, seeing who he has in front of him, mm -hmm. creating the dialogue. He understands what the script kind of is, but the magic really happens there and then. That's awesome. Uh, your character has a, a knack for keeping things. So when he sees something cool, he's like, I gotta take it. Right. Did you all keep anything from this movie? Or have you ever kept anything from like a different film where you're like, oh, that's cool, I gotta keep that prop, I gotta keep that costume? This guy's a kleptomaniac. <laughs> What was what it? did you take? Ask him that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's a story here. <laughs> <laughs> On this one or the other ones? <laughs> Whichever has I, the best story. I, I, I <laughs> love film so much and I am very nostalgic and it is a privilege to be on any movie that you make. And I, thief would say that. <laughs> I, I do have sticky fingers and I have some memorabilia from this film. I was missing some underpants. <laughs> <laughs> and those cigars, one. by yeah. the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were good. Yeah. That, Richard. The cigars it? went in his pocket, and they were removed at some point, <laughs> and now they are in a beautiful glass case of memorabilia. That wouldn't be the weirdest thing to be sold on eBay from a movie set. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, have, I have a Warhammer question for you, and I have yeah. to admit this comes from my producer, Peter. Okay. I don't know too much about Warhammer myself, so I'm just going to read it as written. Okay. Uh, there are lots of rumors about which 40k army is your favorite at the moment. Care to set the record straight about your favorite faction in 10th edition? Well, no. um, I haven't played 10th edition. Uh, oh, okay. But regardless, it's still Custodes. Okay. Yeah. I, it's another language to me, but I, yeah. Peter's happy and everybody, yeah. the Warhammer fans are thrilled. Uh, <laughs> I have to, and Henry G, yes. uh, I'm a, comic book is a Paramount company now, so I've got to make our big Bob happy here with a question oh, yeah, for yeah. you. <laughs> 
You were Snake Eyes. Yes, sir. There's like a Transformers, G.I. Joe crossover maybe. Have you Ooh. heard anything about that? Can you talk at all to a future there? I mean, Lorenzo de Bonaventura um, is a busy man and a phenomenal uh, producer. And um, it's in safe hands. Whatever happens, uh, I think it's going to be a combination of, of what has come and what is to come. Um, I think I think Paramount have some uh, some grand grand plans. Hey man, hopefully we'll see him one day. Right now, it's all Who about knows? Ministry of Ungentlemanly <laughs> Warfare, and I thought the movie was so much fun, guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much for hanging with Thank me today. By, by the way, I, I love your site, and I continuously look at your site for updates. It's one of my favorites, and Dude, I have to, I have best I, I just have to say that. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thank you. It means a Do lot. Do not Thank feel you. obliged to post any articles about it. <laughs> <laughs> One page. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate it. Thank thanks. you thanks, so much. Guys. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, here we are. Here we are. How are y'all feeling today? Great. Quite well. Awesome. Well, the movie's well. awesome, so congratulations. Thank you guys, you, it looked like you had so much fun on it. Yeah. We, we did. did. Awesome. We sure did. Yeah. Hey, so I'm going to come to you first. Your character, Marjorie, after the true story becomes an actress, uh, how do you kind of prepare for playing a real-life person like that? Did you watch any of her films? I mean, I, I've... I read more about her than than watching. Sure. I, I read a lot about it because we have the book, obviously, mm -hmm. and Guy had it sitting around all the time, and so I would always grab it and read. Um, I was fascinated, just more than the, the acting part, which that was incredible because that's the aftermath of basically her. I think it was her, her I mean, the fact that all the, the talents she had, like, it was very rare that you hear women being part of a, a special SOA, SOE uh, mission. And so the fact that they would choose her, I was fascinated about what their traits were, like what what was her qualities, what made her interesting. And she was just so confident, so calm, cool, collected. She was such a go-getter and mm -hmm. nothing phased her that I was very fascinated by her, how courageous she was. and. I was just hoping that I could honor her in the best way possible. It, it was a lot of work, you know, it was a lot of foreign things for me. I, I'd never play British, I'd never play, you know, in that era. So ad getting adjusted to like the physicality also of that era is very yeah. different to the contemporary mm -hmm. side. So it was a great preparation process and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, you could look at the accent too, you crushed it. Crushed Thank it, you. Right? Yeah, that's not easy. That's Thank not, you, that's it all, is not that's easy. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, and you, she plays a character based on somebody for real life. You're playing a character in Invented for this story. Invented for this story. So, Absolutely. one thing I noticed. So, you've you've in a, in a lot of your roles, like Mar uh, Marvel, Star Trek, Dune. You've had some incredible costumes, mm. and in this, you look so cool. She looks amazing. Thank you, Doug. Like e Thank every you. every scene, you got a new awesome set of apparel yeah. going on. Yeah. Uh, I love to hear about how getting into the costume as Heron, working with Lulu, uh, yeah. helped you find this character, if at all. She's so cool. I mean, she's, she's very cool. Lulu is very she's cool, fantastic. very supportive, very inspiring. Mm -hmm. uh, really gives you that energy that yeah, I look amazing. Uh, yeah, this is right. This is, you know, she she helped me craft yeah. uh, the look and uh, picking those suits apart, you know, and um, of course your costume, if it's the right thin, gives you uh, quite a bit of the character, you know, and how we move in it and how we sit in it and how we walk in it. Um, so that was uh, meeting Lulu and, and coming up with the costumes and picking all of them out gave me a lot of, uh, it propelled me uh, even more into, awesome. into the role. Yeah, you Absolutely. Had such kind of like just yeah. presence in the with the costume. I could feel, I could yeah. feel it. It was awesome. Thank you, man. Thank Car, you. your character uh, has real life ties to your family. That's correct. I believe your grandfather worked with the real version of M. That's correct. He worked uh, okay. for for M. Yes. So how do you <laughs> unpack that when you're becoming the guy, the real guy who was? Um, well, I was fortunate in that my grandfather, even though he didn't talk so much about the war because he's it's they like a CIA did. agent, they just really don't discuss it much, even yeah. with family. But I picked his brain a bit, obviously, while he was still alive, and he, he was my real-life hero growing up, you know. And uh, much of Gubbins' work, uh, his notes and all of that stuff, all the, the offices of Baker Street at SOE burnt down. So the only thing that was left were his personal diaries, which are now at the Imperial War Museum. So I had a chance to go over there and read his diaries, which was <gasps> great. Yeah, and, and what was kind of cool is I could, he had lunch with my grandfather on this date, mm -hmm. what? and then wow. lunch with my great uncle on this date. Wow. So it was kind of cool finding out, oh, 
So I really have a real connection to this in a way that was kind of powerful. You're very, very yeah. British. Yeah, very British. You're very <laughs> British. <laughs> yeah. And he's also the real life inspiration for M from the James That's Bond That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So now in reading those diaries and now playing them, what do you think he would think of all that has followed his life, that your, uh, Grubbin's character? I don't know. I think he would be proud that, that, that finally the story's being told about mm -hmm. how important these missions were mm -hmm. for, for, for winning the war. You know, Churchill really believed that uh, sabotage and subversion were a key element to winning the war. Mm -hmm. Not just bringing the Americans in, obviously, but, mm -hmm. but because the Germans were fighting guerrilla warfare, Churchill felt, well, we should do the same. Mm -hmm. And so he created this, this sort of special operation secretly because he knew that, that uh, his cabinet and, and parliament would not go for it at all. And of course the army and the navy were really upset. How can we have these people working uh, you know, irregularly without any proper orders? And, and so he, he supported M completely. Wow. That's and awesome. that's how these missions took place. They were completely done under the wire privately, quietly. It's just so amazing that people yeah. get to know like Ian Fleming was involved, sure. like yeah. people around yeah. the world that really didn't know because obviously if you grew up in, in certain countries you're more informed, but yeah. it's 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 fun that it's a movie that's educational while yeah. having a good time and yeah. you're getting to know so much about history and that there's something very special about the worlds crossing each other, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. Ian Fleming. That's that's where it came from. Yeah, oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's like the, the beginning, yeah. the birth of it. Yeah. yeah. And just watching the movie and then going back into the research, I learned so much about the real story too. Mm. So yeah. it's mm. awesome, guys. Thank you so much for hanging with me today. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys rock. You. Guy, Jerry, pleasure to meet you both. And Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is a blast. So thanks for talking with me about it. First of all, I feel like every time Henry Cavill does a press junket, we hear about James Bond. People are asking him about James Bond. This character he plays in Ministry is the real life man who inspired James Bond. Uh, what do you think it is about roles like this that make Henry Cavill so good for the part? And do you think this might scratch the itch for him a little bit? Sorry. <laughs> well, he's very handsome. He is. Nobody's going to argue with you on that. He was Superman, right? He was. And he's a wonderful actor. And he's got a, wonder, a great sense of humor. And that's so important, especially when you work with Guy. You have to have a sense of humor because he makes everything fun. He makes the movie experience fun. He makes their creative process fun because he, he incorporates them in everything. He's like a, you know, a master general out there who's who's kind of moving his troops around, but they enjoy the process. They all want to come back. Every one of our, you ask them, every actor wants to come back and do another one and work with Guy again. That's just how it is. That's why it's, I always call it like, they're going to summer camp, they're having a blast. They're getting away from home and they're, they can be creative and have fun at the same time. But they're working, but it doesn't feel like work. It's not, I asked about Henry, it's not the first time you guys have worked together too. I love Man from Uncle as well. Uh, th th I mentioned Bond, this is, this is a movie where you also cast Ian Fleming, who wrote Bond. Uh, Freddie Fox is in that part. How did you guys feel the responsibility to find the right person to play Ian Fleming, who kind of kept logs of a lot of these people, even in a fictional, fictional way? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of authentic, the, uh, the idea of <laughs> Fleming in this equation. Uh, exactly who's going to play him is uh, whatever. Um, he did, Freddie did a great job. Um, it, it, the question was is how integrated within the narrative we we will uh, have Fleming and it was a it was an endless discussion about how much we should have him and how much we shouldn't have. but you're right to the point to the point that uh, yeah Gus, Mar Gus Marks Phillips being uh, the what appears to be the principal uh, incentive for the James Bond character uh, and it's not just that there's all, all sorts of seminal components uh, involved in this uh, mission uh, this was the the genesis of um, special ops in general, and how it changed warfare from thereafter, from this moment. So I I got uh, Jerry's uh, enthusiasm for this particular project um, was really contagious, and it's Jerry that inspired me to sort of work myself up into a further of enthusiasm for this. So. Uh, there are so many aspects about this uh, this particular mission that were pioneering and seminal, and not least was the uh, actually we uh, Jerry and I had forgotten the James Bond link actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, because there were so many other components in the equation. Yeah. 
Uh, one, one per the cast is tremendous. One person who's not here today, I wish I could talk to him, was Alan Richardson, who I think steals every scene he's in. And I feel like his career right now is really having a moment going like that. And it's fun to watch. I love to hear about working with him on set. What like bringing out new sides of him and the kind of what he brought to the set and his presence because he's also very funny in this movie. Yeah, he's funny, but he's a real professional, Alan. And mm -hmm. he really brought, he has a stuntman that comes with him and it's very similar. And I'm never terribly impressed with people's ideas with stunts. That wasn't the case with uh, Alan. <laughs> uh, Alan and his chap, who's a sub Australian guy, who they were kind of a brilliant double act. And what they brought was this very creative and fresh approach to action, and which uh, unbeknownst to me, they had been squirreling away behind the scenes and got on with it. I loved them for that. When someone does the work behind uh, the movie and I don't know about it, and then they present an idea on the day and it's good, there, which is seldom does that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and Alan and his guy, you know, all their action stuff they'd worked out beforehand. It was all very good. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, it came through. Jerry, I've got to go off topic with you for a second, if that's all right. You, you've, you've been attached to some of my favorite franchises. First of all, I'm so glad Bad Boys for Life is also on the way. But what do you think we might see first? Another Top Gun or another Pirates? Uh, it's hard to tell. You think you do? Can't tell. Can't say just yet. I, I, you don't know. Sure. You really don't know. You don't know how, it, how they come together. You, you, you just don't know. Because... In Top Gun, you have an actor who's iconic, mm -hmm. brilliant, and how many movies he does before he does Top Gun, we can't, I can't tell you that. Sure. But we're going to reboot Pirates, so that is easier to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. Right, right. And so this one, I know this is kind of based on a true story with some fictional elements to it, but the end of this movie seems like, all right, we might have set up like a World War II Avengers type thing here. Uh, could this be something you guys revisit in the future for more stories with these characters in this cast? It was up to me, yes. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, guys, thank you so much for the time. I'm a huge fan of your work, and it's an absolute pleasure to talk thank to you, you both. Thank you. Thank you. 